Hello everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we'll be flying the PW5 on a cross country. This will be my third cross country at about a hundred mile distance. The PW5 is obviously a single seater, weighs about 400 pounds empty and has a gross weight of about 660 pounds. It has a glide ratio of 32 to 1 and this aircraft makes a perfect stepping zone from the two-seater high performance trainer that you'll fly into the single seater that you can fly solo. And can you believe this folks? It's only about $21 an hour to fly. $21. That's amazing. Okay on this image we're going to talk about some of the information that's displayed in real time. I'm using a GPS data logger that's built into the aircraft to use to make all these effects. On the bottom left hand corner that's ground speed not air speed. GPS can only calculate ground speed. On the top left we have the flight time. In the center is your compass heading. Moving over to the top right corner, if you're an optimist, that's a rate of climb indicator as measured in feet per minute. If you're a pessimist, then I would assume it's a rate of sink indicator. On the bottom right hand side is the altimeter. Please note we're about 660 feet above sea level. So in this example, we're about 5,700 feet above the ground. The wing runner will come over and I'll hand him my tow ticket. He'll give that to the tow pilot. Okay. Getting ready to go, done my pre flight. Let me look at the, let me inspect it real quick. Okay. It's, you'll find it down there. It's kind of, I'll pull it, I'm open now. Close, pull. The wing runner will attach the tow rope. He'll pull on it. I've got my hand on the brake so I don't roll forward. He's going to move off to the side and level the wings. I'm moving the rudder pedals from the left to right to say I'm ready for takeoff. The wing runner will confirm that. And here we go. So at this point I've already determined if I have any crosswind. I want to be airborne before the tow plane so I've got to focus very carefully on keeping it on the deck. Probably no more than about five feet off the runway. If the tow rope failed at this point, I'd be landing straight ahead, maybe slightly to the right or slightly to the left. You will practice simulated tow rope failures, and that's a very important part of your training. I've cleared the area, I've pulled my tow release, the tow plane will make a left hand descending turn, I will make a right hand turn ascending to help convert some of that excess speed energy I have into height energy. This was my third cross country and obviously it was an exceptional day. This one is where I flew about a hundred miles. It was starting at TSA going over to Lupscombe which is a grass field there and that's located about 10 miles from TSA. I did locate an exceptional thermal and was able to climb basically to over 6,000 feet. It was just an amazing day. Now that I've gained my altitude, okay, I'm going to turn toward Lufscombe, about 10 miles away. I'm going to put the nose down and convert away. the excess height energy I have, so to speak, into speed energy. When I was flying to Lufscombe, I found a number of long street thermals, in other words, lift that's in a long parallel line. I did what they call dolphin, or another word maybe is porpoise. I would slow down when I'd find lift without any intention of turning and circling in it. When that occurs, I just simply slow down in lift, fly faster in sink, and even faster in heavy sink. Okay, now basically I'm headed south. I do have a, a slight headwind, and on this part of the leg, it took about maybe three thermals, maybe four, to get safely to Hillsboro. So why use airports as waypoints? Well, it gives me the possibility of landing there if I don't find any additional lift. As I flew to Hillsboro, again, I found these long streaks of thermals. I can see the airspeed indicator. 
and I can see it's around 40, a little over 40, and I've slowed down in this lift. I'm climbing. I have no intentions of circling in it, but I'm certainly going to take advantage of it as I fly through it. Dolphin or porpoising is one of the basic fundamentals that you need to use when you're flying. And again, it's simply slow down and lift, speed up and sink, and speed up even faster in heavy sink. We have an amazing club south of Dallas in Midlothian, Texas, about an hour's drive south from Dallas. And it's all volunteers. We all help out. That's what keeps the cost of flying so low. I mean, this glider is only $21 an hour to fly. You're not going to find that anywhere, certainly not at any commercial operation. Again, I'm flying through long lines of street thermals. I can see the airspeed indicator, and I'm flying a, about 40. I can see it. And of course, I'm climbing. We take advantage of this. Anytime we can get in this situation where we can slow down and climb, then that's what we're going to do, or at least that's what I'm doing. As you gain more experience, you can start flying around the course faster. But for me, it's conservative. There's no reason for me to go as fast around the triangle as possible. That'll come as I get more experience. All right, at this point, I've made it to Hillsboro Airport. I can see it below me. I'm going to work this additional thermal over the airport before I start heading back to TSA. So the flight goes like this, about 10 miles to Lupscombe, from there about another 20 miles to Hillsboro, and then about another 20 miles back to uh, TSA. The basic triangle was about 50 miles, but I flew around the course twice in the same day, and that's how you come up with 100 miles. The one thing I couldn't video was final glide. The battery had only lasted about an hour and a half. This was a three hour flight. Typically, final glide would be flown at a much higher airspeed. In other words, you have no intentions of working any more thermals, so you want to get back to your airport as fast as possible. At this point, I've flown around the course twice. We're ready to come in for a landing, and it was All about right, 6 p.m. It slows down. About 6 p.m., so I guess there's no more thermals today. At this point, I'm going to add some down trim and pick up airspeed. I'm on a left-hand downwind for runway 18 at TSA. In just a moment, I'll be uh, left, left downwind about midfield as I approach the runway. I'll be looking for traffic. Obviously, at this time of the day, there probably isn't another glider up there, but you got to make sure you got to look out that window at all times. As I proceed lower, my ground speed has increased. I checked the spoilers momentarily to make sure they work. Why would I check it there? The reason is, if they stuck open, I could still make that runway. That's part of your training. Here I'm turning left base. I'll pull out of probably about half the spoilers. I like to make a nice, tight approach. Those spoilers are extremely effective for bringing you down. The last thing you want to be low and slow. Turning on final. Again, I can still see that the spoilers I've got pulled out about 50%. I'm going to line up on the runway, start easing back on the elevator to start slowing the ground speed down before touchdown. I think my objective is just hold it off the ground as long as I can. Touchdown at about 45 miles an hour. Got the spoilers full, got my hand on the brake. I'm going to coast on up to about midfield. All right.
Four hours, not bad. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. So be sure and look up the club at texassoaring.org. Whether you're a seasoned pilot or a novice, you can learn to fly. Another benefit of flying gliders is you don't need a medical. So everyone have a great day, and we'll see you in the air next time. Bye-bye.